Hello everyone, today I have a very special friend and he is Warren Muiva. He's the founder of STEP Academy here in, I mean, here in Timapur. And this organization is all about skill development for the youth, especially connecting opportunities with education. So uh, let's see how he's working on this academy and what is the prospect of an organization like this. So thanks so much for Warren for joining me for this uh, short conversation. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And this STEP Academy has been founded by you. Yes, that's yeah. correct. When, when was it founded, by the way? September 2023. Oh, this month. This month? Yeah, it's when, the, it's when the Academy started. The thought behind it happened in the beginning, in, towards the mid of May. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, but this, the, the nature of work like this for skilling students or youth has been active even before this? Yes. Okay. So, I also run an organization called Step Northeast in Manipur because that's where I'm from originally. For the last three years, I've been running a nonprofit in Manipur called Step Northeast, where the focus has been to bridge the opportunity and educational gap between urban and rural areas. Mm -hmm. So, as part of our endeavor towards that, we have a vertical called Step Fellowship, which is an employability program for indigenous women. So we've been successfully running two batches where we have about 26 girls who have graduated from this program and we have placed 70% of them in different jobs across India and abroad. Okay. So as per your analysis, like what are some of the basic gaps that you find between the rural education or rural youth and the urban opportunities? Like where are the gaps and what is the nature of those gaps? I mean, from your experience? Mm -hmm. The most, the most basic gap is, I think, is, is quality. Okay. So it's an open secret that most of the schools in rural areas do not have, you know, uh, good teachers because of various circumstances. Uh, there are no quality education. There's no quality education. So that is very visible mm -hmm. in terms of the student's outlook to life, student's outlook to the world in general. So when we travel to all of these rural areas, yes. I can see a stark difference between students in uh, urban area. in an urban okay. area as opposed to students in rural areas mm -hmm. in terms of just uh, the knowledge they possess. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, of course, they're smart yeah, yeah. students as well, but Absolutely. in terms of um, you know, the, uh, the critical thinking ability, in terms of just being aware of things that are happening in the world, and also the most basic foundation of uh, English, mm. maths, for that matter, mm. right? So when I go to a lot of villages, sometimes I have to resort to speaking my own local dialect mm. because many of them are not comfortable with English, mm -hmm. right? So those are the most visible differences mm. that I see when I travel to rural areas mm -hmm. to do my work. Mm, okay. Now that you are kind of like very dedicated to make the dreams of youth realize in order to help them reach their dreams of like accessing those opportunities. Because definitely what you mean to say is also that there are no opportunities in the rural areas Correct. for students. Yeah. On top of that, they don't have the skills. So the opportunities that you're looking for is located or confined to the urban areas. Yes, most of them. Okay, mostly, right? Yeah. So what inspired you in the beginning to look at urban areas for the rural youth to look towards the urban area opportunities? Like so what inspired you in the beginning? Yeah, I think it's because of my lived experience. Okay. In a sense, I was born and brought up in Imphal. So, you know, I, st I studied in a comparatively better place mm. than my peers who were born in the village and grew up with education from the village. Mm -hmm. So comparatively, I was in a better position. But when I left Manipur to pursue my father's studies, mm. so I would like to <clears throat> bring about my experience at a Young India Fellowship, which is a one-year postgrad liberal arts program mm -hmm. in Delhi, right? So when I went there, I was the only Northeastern travel boy in a class of 100. Mm -hmm. And all my classmates were from all across India, from some of the best schools, colleges, okay. uh, with really solid foundations. And when I was put in a room, in a class with these people, 
I realized how weak I was. I realized mm. how, you know, how handicapped I am in terms of my critical thinking ability, in terms of just knowledge of the world. Until then, I was, I was a comparatively good, relatively good student back home. Mm. So everybody said, wow, Warren's a smart student. He's a mm. smart kid. Mm. But when I went there, I was a nobody, mm -hmm. right? And then that's when I realized that, wow, we still have a long way to go if we want to catch up with these people. Mm. I think that is one of the epiphanies I realized uh, when I decided to quit my job, come back home, and do something for my people back home. Great, great. I'm sure this, you know, the, the industry you are in right now, mm. skill development or upskilling students, um, even in Nagaland State, there are many organizations doing the same. Mm. So how, what kind of, uh, let's say, genre, what kind of area that you would like to distinguish yourself from providing this if you're aware of their work? Yeah. Okay, so okay you can speak closer to the mic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's okay. So, um, mine, I would, so it's, it's, my academy focuses on making the youth job ready. Okay. So we equip them with skills mm -hmm. that make them more employable in the market. But I don't want to sort of confine myself to just equipping them with skills, mm -hmm. but I am also on a mission to create better critical thinkers in our society. And I think that's one area where my institute stands out. So, and the other area where my institute stands out is that I've been able to, I've been able to leverage on my network from yeah. across the world, mm -hmm. from my friends, to such an extent that most of our faculty who are teaching in our academy are alums of Oxford, mm. Cambridge, Harvard, Stanford, INSEAD Paris, right, uh, Erasmus University, and so on. And we've designed a curriculum where we're focusing on increasing the critical thinking ability of our students. Mm -hmm. So just yesterday, just, just on the day before yesterday, we had a, a session that's conducted by my friend, who is from, who's an alum from INSEAD, and another friend who is from Stanford, they conducted a one and a half hour session of critical thinking, where the students were encouraged to express themselves right, through activities where they were you know, made to discuss in groups about their opinions about certain things and then share it with the class and you know, just allow them to discuss, go deeper inside mm -hmm. and think. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's one area where my institute stands out in the sense it's not only focused on making them more skilled, but it's also focused on making them more better critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that a lot of institutes are not doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I truly concur to what you say when it comes to that critical thinking. You know, we Nagas generally, we, we know like one plus one equal to two. Yeah. And knowing that seems to be enough for, for us. Mm -hmm. But we don't question like why one plus one equal to two. True. Who founded it? And how this formula came into being. Mm -hmm. That's just a basic example that I'm trying to give. Yeah. And Nagas love to pursue um, liberal arts mm -hmm. rather than like science or commerce yeah. or whatever STEM education that we have. Um, in your skilling here, you know, what are the skills that you teach in so your academy? Yeah. yeah, we've curated about 10 to 12 courses. Okay. Uh, soft skills like effective communication, how to effectively use your body language mm. to become better communicators. How do you control your voice to become better communicators, right? We have a course on personality development, leadership, uh, things like that. We have courses on effect critical writing, uh, creative writing, my bad, creative writing, okay. where we have two journalists coming and teaching, it, teaching them about the basic fundamentals of grammar to creative writing, which can be tied with how to write SOPs, mm. cover letters. Mm -hmm. We have courses on how to create CV. Uh, we have courses on Microsoft Excel. We have a digital literacy course, which just concluded last week, where we had a workshop on ChatGPT, how to use Canva to create a personal branding for yourself. Absolutely. Um, ChatGPT, yes. Email etiquettes, how to write emails, how to address different people, mm -hmm. how to put your subject in an email. So things like that. We have regular guest sessions 
So we have every week, we have guest sessions every week where we bring distinguished people from Nagaland and from across the world to come and talk to our students about their journey, inspire them, because that's what happened at the Young India Fellowship. Every week they brought it, they brought in different personalities from across the world, from different walks of life, and they just shared their experiences and that really enriched my mind, right? It really broadened my outlook, made me think beyond, made me come out of my comfort zone. And that is something that I want to create in my academy among, among my students as well. Mm -hmm. So we have those guest sessions as well. Um, the week after, we have someone from Oxford who will be coming and sharing her journey how, of how she got into Oxford, how she prepared herself to get into Oxford, and uh, she's willing to mentor some of our students, wow. help, help them, guide them uh, with their application process if they are interested. Mm. So we have, yeah, something like that. Oh, wow, that's interesting. I wish we had these courses like when we were young as students, right? True, definitely. Because uh, we, we, we generally do not know how to write, how to draft an email after finishing your master's. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the biggest, biggest weakness that we all have. I mean, as a society, mm. because our education is you know, designed in such a way that we don't have this, like you mentioned, digital literacy, yeah. which is very, very important. Drafting a simple email is a challenge. You, you go and ask anyone who has just completed their master, everyone will struggle. Yeah. Because we don't have the training, like we, don't, we, have, we haven't undergone such training mm. in our life. So from here on, you have stationed yourself here in Dimapur. Yes despite the fact that you're not from Nagaland as well. Yeah. What brought you to Dimapur? Why, why not other place? Or let's say, why not Imphal? Uh, I think... <coughs> Please get closer I to I think it's all, yeah. it's all written in the stars, what's supposed to happen, I guess. So okay. when I came to Dimapur yeah. in May, I came just to escape the conflict. Okay. So I was in Imphal until the 12th of May and hoping that the internet would be restored. But for two weeks, there was no internet, and I got news that it will be extended until the end of May. And for two, month, for two weeks, I couldn't do my work because there was no internet, right? So I decided, let me go somewhere mm. where I can access internet. Yeah. And the most practical place at that point of time was Dimapur because I have uh, quite a lot of relatives living here. Mm. And I have an uncle, my mom's younger brother, who settled in Dimapur. And it made complete sense because he has an extra room for me. So I decided, let me, let me come here. So that's how I ended up coming to Dimapur. Great. I had no intention of staying longer than a month because I thought, max, after a month, the conflict will get resolved. Mm -hmm. I'll head back home, get back with my life. But it never got better. In fact, it got worse. So then I decided, you know, if I'm here doing nothing, I might as well do something, be productive. And my organization steps, long-term vision has always been to impact the entire Northeast, mm. not just Manipur, right? Yeah, but I so. thought it would be after f maybe four or five years, yeah. but it came much sooner. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized if I'm here, let me do something. And that's when the idea of this academy came up, right? And I said, let me go about with it. Let me implement it. And that's how I started the work in June, mm -hmm. uh, June, July, August. September, we launched, and here we are. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And you have launched this organization with an intention and the mission to bridge the gaps between the rural areas, youth, mm. and the urban opportunities. So um, what will be the strategies that you will be using in order to bridge this gap? Yeah. Like those of the skills, some of the skills that you have mentioned, mm. those are one. And do, if you have any, because like many people have tried, mm. even government, along the government depart, departments have tried to mm. connect this, but the challenges are seemingly quite big, too big, yeah. that many of the initiatives seem to fail. True. So how are you looking at it very so differently? I, I'm not being, I'm, I don't want to be too over ambitious as well. Yeah. I want to take baby steps. And of course, the first thing is true helping them get jobs. So unofficially, I have had friends who understand the work that we do here and said, we would like to hire students from your academy who already possess all of the skills. Instead of hiring someone who has zero skills and they have to learn at the workplace, right? So mm -hmm. it's just a loss of resource, time and all of that. So we have such understanding. So obviously, I want to create 
employment opportunities for our students, mm -hmm. make them employable. Okay. The second thing is we have a lot of smart students in our academy who are fresh graduates, but have no idea, and I completely resonate with them because after the graduation, no matter how smart they are, because of limited opportunities, because of limited exposures, they have no idea on how to go forward, right? So I have spoken to them and I've told them about the existence of numerous fellowships in our country, mm. right? Teach for India, a Young India Fellowship, LAMP Fellowship, Gandhi Fellowship, sure. SBI Fellowship. My objective is also to make sure that the students who are interested in pursuing further studies, who are smart, who want to do this, I want to make sure that at least three to five students from our academy get into one of these fellowships, mm -hmm. right? And see, like I, like I said, up until my undergrad, I was clueless. I had no idea what to do with my life. Oh, then I got you. accepted at a Young India Fellowship. That's where everything changed. Mm -hmm. I had a clearer picture of what I want to do. I had a clearer picture of the possibilities that lay ahead of me and I had to take my decisions accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I, wanna, I want my students to experience the same thing. I want to help, I want to help put one foot inside the door. Only then will they be able to put the second foot inside. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. they just don't know the way to put that one foot inside the door. Mm. They and haven't figured out the door, figured door out even. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they haven't even figured out. So I want Step Academy to be that platform that helps them put one foot inside the door. I see. Right? So let's say introduce them to fellowships, help them with the application, help them write the cover letters, you know, proofread it for them, write recommendation letters for them, things like that. Once they get into the fellowship, as they interact with their peers with the faculty there, they'll have more idea of what they want to do next, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's how they're going to slowly figure out life and they'll become somebody in life. And True. I want my academy to be that launching pad mm -hmm. for such uh, people in the future. I get you, I get yeah. you. So uh, do you want to prepare our youth for the jobs? Yes. Like we have the degree, like I mentioned before and mm -hmm. we talked before, we have the degree, we have the diploma or whatever, but in order to get into a job, there are, there are a lot of challenges as well, True. right? You just can't apply with your certificate. Yeah. You have to go through some process, True. like writing cover letter. Mm -hmm. Until recent, let's say, until like a few years ago, I did not know what is cover letter. Same. Like, what does it mean by cover letter? The name doesn't itself suggest yeah. anything about cover letter, <laughs> right? True. So that was a good learning. And if students can learn this early, mm -hmm definitely their career will be brighter than what we have right now. Yes. Truly sure. encourage you, encouraging what you do. And I would also strongly encourage students to look out for academy like this, look out for institute <laughs> like this to get some skills. Mm -hmm. So, living with that note, what do you, where do you see your organizations now, let's say three, four years, or let's say five years down the line? Five years down the line, I want STEP Academy to be the go-to institute mm. for people who want to make something out of their lives. True. And not only that, I want to be ambitious and say that in the next five years, I want STEP Academy branches to be in every city in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So right now we're starting in Dimapur. I hope and pray mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that there would be STEP Academy uh, centers in Shillong, Imphal, uh, Itanagar, Agartala, you know, Gangtok. I want to have, I, I just want to spread it, replicate this method mm -hmm. and just change the lives, improve the scope for our upcoming generation. Mm. And that's what I want to achieve. I think that's fairly ambitious, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say which is great. So, f so far, you, have, you just said you just launched your organization in September. Yes. And how, much, how many students have come forward to enroll for this program? So, yeah, um, by God's grace, we had 45 signups. Wow. Right? We, yeah. had no, we, had, we didn't do any advertisements. <laughs> when we started, our Instagram page had about 100 odd followers. And I used that platform. I used my personal Instagram platform to just advertise. I had, a, I had a lot of good friends, supportive friends from Nagaland mm -hmm. who helped spread the word as well. We mm -hmm. didn't use any digital platforms or print paid, media, paid advertisements, nothing, nothing, nothing right. of that sort. But despite that, we got 45 signups, um, but then some of them dropped out. So we have, I think, a final number of 35 students in the okay. first batch. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, that that's a great achievement because, like you know, as business, the, as business or any sort of venture or initiatives that you take, mm. like in one month, this forty five or thirty five students, like in in at a normal speed, mm. at a normal rate. You will be getting in six months. Yeah. Like normally. True. True. That's my assumption. Yeah. But you get it like just the, the next day when you launch this organization. That, <laughs> yeah. that is a great achievement. I would say congratulations for that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Only by God's grace. Yeah. yeah. So um, now when you look at the students, mm. one thing that I would really like to understand is what are the skills that they are really lacking? Because you have a set of mm. skill set that you want to inculcate in them, mm. right? Now when they come as a fresh students, mm. what kind of skills do they do they like really really lack or how raw they were before when they joined this i would say 90% of them lacked everything and they all sign up the good thing about our students is that nobody forced them to sign up for this they all sign up out of their own volition mm. right because they realized i lack the skills i lack this i lack that and i they wanted to learn so 90% of them for example the, the greatest challenge for me would be i think communication skills True. Right? They're all nice people, good people, but just don't know how to communicate effectively or professionally. I agree. Uh, they don't know how to express themselves. They want to be better public speakers. Mm. And that is one thing that we're trying to achieve through our academy as well, through those critical thinking exercises and activities that we do. We're slowly bringing them out of their comfort zone because mm -hmm, after mm -hmm. every exercise, we encourage each student to express what they felt in the exercise, right? Yeah. So initially they were like, oh, I feel shy, I don't want, oh, I no, no, you do it, you do it. <laughs> then we encourage them and they, when they start speaking, we realize, whoa, right? This girl, uh, we didn't know that this girl had this in her. We didn't yeah. know this guy had this in him, right? right? So over the, next, over the course of the next three months, we want them to really realize that they are smart, that they can do it. And that's one thing that we want to achieve. So communication is a big issue, which, but slowly overcoming that. Um, nine, I would say 95% of them don't have Excel skills. Uh, so true. all of them came because of that as well. Mm. And then, for example, we, they don't know, half of them don't know how to make CVs. Yeah. Right? They don't Excellent. know how to, make, Very how to write cover letters or SOPs. So basically, they're lacking in everything, which is why they, say, they signed up out of their own volition to uh, equip themselves with all of the skills. True, true. So, yeah, I think... I think Every, uh, they all they all lack of all of the skills yeah wow. i totally agree naga society we really lack like communication skills mm. communication doesn't mean a good english of course it means you know having the ability to convey what you think to others yeah and having the ability to be able to understand what they're trying to tell you mm. so this has to be bridged true without this i think regardless of how smart we are in our thinking or in 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 our degree or in our education it will not take us far, yeah. as far as I understand. So thanks so much for this insightful um, conversation and you know, like the, the, the such a great initiative that you're taking. Thank you. I hope this will lead our younger generation to somewhere where we were not given the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's, that's a hope. That's a right. hope. Like I said, I think it all, all of these initiatives, my decision to come back home, start my organization, start this academy, all boils down to my lived experience of having grown up without any of such yeah. opportunities, right? Absolutely. And in hindsight, I realized my college life would have been so much more productive. Mm. My university life, I, I, I got a scholarship, I went abroad, I came back, right? So I felt that my experience there could have been so much more fruitful. Mm. So I felt if, if I could have reached 100%, I was able to achieve just 50%. Not because of anything else, but because of the lack of awareness of such things mm -hmm. while growing up. Right? I had nobody to guide me, no, no mentors. Mm -hmm. Even the word mentor did not exist in my vocabulary. Yeah, really? That's true. Then right? so all of these things, I realized that I, want, I don't want this upcoming generation to grow up in the same environment, same situation like we did. I want them to grow up in a better environment that will propel them, push them, to become better versions of themselves. Absolutely. And that's why this academy, this organization started. Absolutely. So all the best to STEPS Academy. Thank you. Thank and you. I, I hope and pray for you that many students enroll for this program and get to learn many, many more things. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, and let's talk again in the future. Definitely. We have so much more yeah. to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. 